What is up guys and welcome back. This video is going to be all about the Commonwealth in the mid game. So kind of what are some things that the British and friends may want to do with their time and with their navy and with the assets they have on the ground. We'll start over here in the Atlantic and talk about how you can set your ships up and deal with the Mediterranean and with the German Navy and what to do with your bombers and whatever air force you may have at this point. Then we'll head over to the Pacific, talk about some FEC and some Anzac stuff and how you can annoy the Japanese and bolster your islands and your colonies a little bit. All right, let's go. Okay, starting over here with mainland Europe and the British Isles. Um, I have no way of knowing how much Air Force you're going to have at this point. I'm, gonna, I'm trying to take as few liberties as possible with these videos to reach as, wide, as many situations as possible. But it's safe to assume you're going to have, you know, at least a couple fighters in here at this point. Um, you know, hopefully the U.S. sends you some and you're starting to feel pretty good about your Air Force. But right now I'm just going to talk about what you can do with this medium bomber and with this strap bomber. Um, you should probably be using the strap bomber almost every turn to, uh, to carpet bomb German infantry sitting here on the coast. You know, they're probably going to have some fighters sitting in these two air bases, so you may get scrambled on. Um, if that's the case, you'll have to bring some fighter escorts, but it shouldn't be too big of a deal. If you're feeling bold, you are in range of both Paris. You can come in here and bomb Paris. Uh, which could be a good idea if he's using that Paris factory a lot to try to bolster the Atlantic wall. For example, right before you, you may be trying to make a, a landing, it could be a great idea to try to bomb this Paris factory. Or you are also in range of Western Germany here, which is probably going to be a little bit more defended. You may not be able to get in there and bomb stuff uh, because in both instances, your fighters won't be able to reach. So it's going to be tough to get um, across undefended. Your, your bombers are going to be undefended going across there. Your medium bomber can make it with that air base. It's a, it's a perfect six steps away. So your medium bomber can get in there and help out in either Paris or Western Germany. Or you can do some other things with your medium bomber. It is great for maritime air patrol in this sea zone which lets you use this guy elsewhere for escort duty or double up if there, you got a lot of subs out here. Or of course you could bring your medium bomber down here to the Middle East where he may be a little more useful. Um, projecting some threat out of Gibraltar in case the Italians try anything crazy. And reinforcing Eastern Egypt and the Middle East in case for example, the Russians come down in the Middle East and you're going to have some problems there later in the game. That medium bomber could be a great offensive weapon for you in the Middle East if you so choose. Now we can talk about the Atlantic more broadly here. I have set up a very, very, very generic defense here because I have no idea how many German subs are going to be out here or where they're going to be located. But I have tried to take care of all the hot spots here. You see we've got two strike groups ready. Now, if there are a lot of subs in this area, you may want to, and depending on how the subs are set up, you may take a couple guys off of es escort duty to strengthen these strike group groups a little bit just so you don't lose those light carriers to attacking subs. Um, you don't have to be too, too worried about the subs coalescing because they only attack at a three, so all of your ships are going to be superior. You can win an uneven fight there. If he's got more subs than you have ships, you'll still probably be okay. And even if it is 50-50, he's losing subs that aren't convoying you. So that could be a good gamble if he decides to do it. I don't think your German player will, but if they do, it's not always a bad thing if you are killing his subs but also losing a couple of ships. I think that's a good deal for the British. You will have naval superiority no matter what. So keep that in mind. Use your escort duty ships. We've got a third strike group down here with the FEC light carrier. 
you should only need three. You can cover just about all the territory you need to with these guys. I didn't put anything down here, but of course you will see his subs coming and you'll be able to shift your defense along with his subs as they come down and take care of any stragglers that come around Africa just fine. Moving on to the med, you see we've got a massive multinational force here with all the ships that are not out here patrolling the Atlantic. And this fleet right here may even be a little bit overkill in terms of what the Italians can produce. Um, you know, if they're building up to maybe possibly attack you instead of just going the spam battleships route, then this is probably all you're going to need to scare him out of doing that. And of course, we have four transports over here. They don't have to be with this battle group, but that's the safest place for them. And you can use them to shift your troops around as you like. Or if the Germans are, you know, sleeping, you can maybe even make a landing into Europe with those transports. Four transports is a good number to have. You probably won't ever need more than that, but who knows? Now, if you'll notice, I'll bring these ships up here as well. Again, just like with the Japanese video and the Dutch fleet, don't overestimate the Italian fleet here. He, it may look like he has a lot, but those are low quality ships. He's got three freaking coastal subs in there and a TBD. He's got four ships rolling at a two, three destroyers, a light cruiser, a sub, a heavy cruiser and a battleship. Like these, he's got a lot of ships, but they aren't nice. They're not good ships. So you don't overestimate the strength of the Italian fleet. He doesn't actually have very much firepower there. So as I said, this fleet right here is way overkill, but it's enough to probably scare him out of doing anything rash and just force him to kind of turtle and do his little battleship thing. And then, you know, eventually the Americans will be here and they'll have plenty of capital ships to make sure the Italians don't get those points for the med. I will mention that in this little setup, if we come over to our build chart, I did spend $8 to finish the light carrier and the light cruiser here. So there's eight bucks we spent, and then I also bought a fighter to go on that light carrier that we built. So 18 bucks of dedicated income. The rest is all what you start with here and in the Pacific. And you've got a formidable defense here that is going to be tough for the Axis to break through in any meaningful way. And of course, the rest of your income is hopefully going to go towards bolstering Eastern Egypt here bolstering Gibraltar, and of course, bolstering London, making sure the Germans don't try anything sneaky there. And that's a lot of what you're going to be doing as the British in the mid-game. You're going to be cleaning up German subs, you're going to be keeping the Italians in check, and I'm a big fan of the Americans coming towards the Atlantic with a lot of transports and using the British naval superiority so that most of the U.S. Big ships can go to the Pacific and handle the Japanese. If the Italians are, are turtling and doing, you know, spam battleships, the Americans will probably send their battleships over to counteract that and just send their carriers into the Pacific, which is going to be perfectly fine to take care of the Japanese. Carriers are better for that than battleships, in my opinion, anyway. So you'll be able to take care of the Med just fine. And of course, if the Germans start building anything more in the Baltic Sea there, maybe some transports or something, you can recall most of this fleet up here to the home islands and, and defend any potential landings. I don't see it happening because if they're spending money on their navy, they're either not buying subs, in which case you don't need all this defense out here, or they're going to not have a great attack in Russia. So most of what you're going to have in the home islands here is infantry and fighters fighters to fend off any German strategic bombing raids and to kind of facilitate some of your own into Germany there. Again, I'm a big believer in strategic bombing, so a good solid base of fighters is going to be great for the British and the Americans are going to be great for you in that department. Hopefully they'll lend these you some. Okay, moving on to the Pacific here. Now as you'll see, 
we sent most of the Pacific Fleet away into the Med and the Atlantic. So right now, all we've got left is a coastal sub because it's slow and, you know, what's the point of taking it over there? You can actually sneak it in and maybe convoy the Japanese a little bit before you die. And then a transport. I left one. You could leave all three if you want. It doesn't matter. It's just, that's just to help facilitate the movement of troops between your various strong points that you will hopefully be creating with your early game money. So, how are we going to annoy the Japanese without a navy? Well, first off, the reason we don't have a navy is because the Japanese have this. And any navy we bring over here is basically going to be useless because the Japanese will just absolutely destroy it. Now, don't forget... This may be a late game topic, but it might be a mid game topic, depending on what the Germans do and how well you're doing in the Atlantic. Once the battle for the Atlantic is under control and the Germans are running out of steam, they don't have many subs, bring some of that fleet back into the Pacific. Once the German subs are taken care of, bring some British ships over here to really put some pressure on the Japanese. At that point, they're probably going to be feeling it from the Americans too from the other side, uh, so you'll be able to squeeze them a little bit, and it'll be great, hopefully. So in the mid game, we're just gonna continue to build up in Calcutta, make sure Calcutta doesn't die. Maybe make a little stronghold in Singapore. Maybe make a little stronghold in Hong Kong. It's up to you what you wanna do with your money, but what you really wanna do is slow down the Japanese as much as possible. I love putting units in Sarawak, because it's out of the way for the Japanese. Um, and if they, they either have to kill Sarawak or they have to leave a bigger garrison on Borneo than they normally would to counteract the units that you have there. I think Sarawak is an underrated place to put some units just to make the Japanese really, really think about you and see you there. And of course, another candidate in a similar reign is New Guinea over here for the Anzac. Anzac aren't going to have much going on, really ever, but they can do a lot with some militia. Put some militia in New Britain, put some militia and infantry in New Guinea, and really their job is to make sure that Sydney doesn't fall into Japanese hands. It's hard to get Sydney back, and so your main priority is making sure Sydney is well defended, and then after that, put some guys in New Zealand because it's worth a few bucks, put some guys in New Guinea. And then who knows, if you're feeling really strong in all those categories, then you can start building some ships to add to the British fleet that's going to be coming over from, from the Atlantic eventually. And make that fleet even bigger. Give the Japanese even more stuff to worry about. But in the mid-game, it's all about slowing the Japanese down. The Americans will be here soon, in a matter of turns. And they'll be coming with subs, and they'll be coming with light cruisers and carriers, and they will be able to take care of the Japanese. Your job is to make sure the Japanese have not ballooned sufficiently to take the Americans head on. Your job is to make them fight for Hong Kong, make them fight for Singapore, make them fight for Sarawak, and don't let them take Calcutta, and don't let them take Sydney. So, not much going on in the Pacific for the FEC and the ANZAC in this particular strategy. Obviously, there are countless other ways to do it. This is the strategy that I've been preaching in my early game strategy video, so I'm just kind of continuing in that same vein. There are other ways to handle this. This is a good beginner-friendly strategy. Slow the Japanese down as much as possible. Make them spin resources to kill you, and the Americans will be here with big ships soon. All right, guys, that's all I got for this one. Uh, there's not going to be a video next week because I'm going to be traveling all day, July the 31st. That's Saturday, so I'm not even going to have time to post a video. But I will be back in time, and I'm going to be looking towards getting a community game started uh, with members of the community that have reached out to me. Um, we could. I've got a couple of good ideas for what we may want to do for that. Um, so stay tuned, guys. I'll see you soon. Love you.